Hey folks, I'm wearing a blazer because today's a special occasion. We're going to be looking at the Ovation Magnum 2 bass guitar. Now this particular series of bass guitars were manufactured between 1974 and about 1979 as far as I can tell from what uh, little records kind of remain. Um, Michael Wright actually does a very interesting article on the Ovation Solid Body Electrics and I'm going to link that in the description. Now he's got this one listed as premiering in 1977, but I've seen some other sources that claim it came out in 74 or 75. The truth is we're not entirely 100% sure. Um, the record keeping back then was just a little bit more, mm, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, we're gonna take a look at this instrument and it's got so many cool features. I, I can't wait. Um, so over the next little while, I'm gonna be making some videos talking about some of the uh, Ovation guitars in my collection, as well as some other interesting um, guitars as well too. Mostly because I feel like they are just kind of unknown instruments. There's not a whole lot of information on them on uh, YouTube. There's not a whole lot of demos. A lot of the stuff that is there now was there seven or eight years ago when I first started getting into them as well. So I kind of wanted to create some of my own just for future collectors that are looking at these instruments and they want to hear what they sound like. So without further ado, let's test out some of the tones. Okay, to start out here, I want to talk about the sound that you're going to be hearing. We're going to be hearing a blend between the microphone as well as a direct input from the amp. Uh, this is a trainer bass amp here. And what I want to go through is I want to go through all the different sort of settings you can get with the EQ band here, the different pickups, uh, as well as maybe playing around with the volume dial a little bit here as well too. So to start off with the construction of the instrument here, you can tell there's <laughs> some strange things going on here. So one of the big things that drew me to this bass guitar here is this kind of this roll cage that kind of goes along the whole length of the instrument here. It serves as a thumb rest obviously up on top but also a finger rest down below and I didn't even realize that was a thing until um, Geddy Lee was on his book tour and he kind of talked about it. But essentially a bass guitar player sometimes at the time would, would play with their thumb like this and they'd need a place to rest their fingers. So that's kind of neat, but it also works obviously for the thumb rest up here as well. So right now I've got it set at its most straightforward basic setting here. So I've got all the EQ sliders at zero. I have both pickups on right now, um, our single coat back here and actually a large, large humbucker up in the front row here. Um, so that's the sound that you're hearing right now. Alright, so let's see if we can dive into some of these different tones. So I'm going to start with just the bridge pickup here. We're going to leave everything at zero for right now, just so you can get a sense of that. It's kind of got that 70s squawk to it, that's for sure. Here's both pickups one more time for posterity. And I'm going to go to the neck pickup only now. This is actually my preferred sound for this bass guitar. I love the sound of this pickup up here. Um, very unique, very thumpy. Okay, so now let's go through a few more of these options. So I'm going to knock it all the way back to the bridge. Let's play around with these EQ sliders here. So you have a treble knob, a mid knob, and a bass, uh, I guess not really knobs, but sliders here. So we're going to play around with that treble. We're going to bring it up. Let's see here. So you can tell already it's it's a lot brighter and more in your face. If I crank that all the way up to the top there. You kind of get this very interesting sound. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to just pluck along a string here and I'm going to slide the slider. And so hopefully you can kind of hear the difference as it goes through. Um, here, I better do it this way, actually. <laughs> so we're at, we're at the max amount. There we go. Now we're at the minimum amount. Now, of course, you can hear that crackling and stuff. This, this bass has got a bit of the fog of war going on with it. Um, so there could be some cleaning involved with those, those inside parts. Um, 
Isn't that crazy though? You can get a huge range of tone. I didn't switch the pickups at all, and all I did is I slid one slider. You can already imagine the amount of variety you can get of sound out of this instrument here um, by playing with different sliders, playing with the neck pickup, um, that sort of stuff. So let's go ahead and play around with that mid slider now. So I'll, I'll reset the treble one. Could slide the mid slider up. Let's try it all the way up at 12 to begin with here. <laughs> Get a wah 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 kind of sound to it, yeah. Okay, and now let's bring that one back. Let's dial it back to zero here. love that tone too actually. I really like low mids on this instrument here. Now I find usually that um, going to the extreme ends with the sliders doesn't get you the best overall sound but it is a good way to show off what the, the instrument's capable of. So there it is, it's just kind of cranked back at the minus six threshold and here it is at the plus six threshold. Cool, I'm gonna set that one back down to zero. Let's play around with this bass slider here. So I'm just gonna crank that one up to the max. So it's kind of interesting. You can kind of hear that by cranking up the bass slider, it has this almost adverse effect on the treble sound. It's a lot deeper. Now if I bring the bass slider back all the way. You can see that definitely has the effect as advertised, right? To bring that bass guitar sound out of it. And you get pretty, a pretty plucky sound, um, even when you switch it up to the neck. Yeah, okay. Here they are with both pickups and we'll just start sliding around and find some interesting tones. So let's see if we can make it as trebly as we can here. All right, um, and we'll maybe try to make it as bassy and thumpy as we can. So we'll go the opposite direction, switch it up to the neck pickup. Yeah, that's an interesting sound as well too. Very low and thumpy. All right. Now I think normally when I when I uh, set this one up, I like to have the mids a little bit lower. I like to have my bass slid down ever so slightly in the treble up just a bit. And then up on the neck pickup up here. Okay. <laughs> and you might be thinking, hey, do, do you know any other riffs than that? Well, I'm playing the same thing over and over on purpose. Um, I actually really dislike in guitar uh, demonstration videos where the guitarist will change some settings around and then play something completely different on the new setting. So I'm trying to keep it as uniform as I can here. Anyways, we're not out of uh, out of tricks here yet. There's actually a kind of a, a hidden feature on the Magnum 1s and 2 basses. And it's this thing right here. You might have noticed it earlier. This is actually a pop-up foam mute. So what this does is by pressing down on this, it actually pushes this foam up until it makes contact with the strings. And when it makes contact with the strings, you get a muted sound out of it. <laughs> Which is bizarre, of course. One of those really weird choices that make Ovation guitars so interesting to me. So this is obviously to kind of create that kind of upright bass sound. And I think by messing with these EQ, EQ sliders a bit, I think you could probably get something pretty close to that, you know. Just kind of an interesting feature. Um, it does have the adverse effect of, of affecting the pitch, especially up on the higher strings. Things get a little, uh, little sharp just because it's pressing on those strings a little bit. Anyways, it's not a, it's not necessarily a feature you, you'd probably use a lot of, anyways. Um, but it's there. Okay, 
Lastly, I want to go through and just do a little bit of a uh, demonstration with a pick as well, too. Um, I'm primarily a pick player, but um, I figured for demonstrating an instrument, uh, you'd, you'd want to hear a little bit of both. So that's it just on the neutral sound with the bridge pickup. Here's both pickups with the pick. And the neck pickup with the pick. And if we play around with some of these settings here again, we can get that sound I was talking about earlier, like that. Yeah, I'm just such a big fan of that. <laughs> the other thing that I do oftentimes when I'm performing with this instrument is I actually take the volume dial and turn it down to about six or seven there, just because I find that the, the pickups are actually running quite hot on this instrument. I've lowered them down as far as they'll go to. Um, I, I, I really strike the strings really hard when I'm, when I'm playing as well though. Um, so I just don't want it to start doing weird peaking things. Of course, that's not going to sound as good because it's softer at this point in time. But uh, if you turn up the amp and get it all balanced, I, th I think it makes for a nice combination there. All right, so I think the last thing I'm going to do here is I'll just play through a little bit of a little bit of a song, and um, I think I'm also going to do a follow-up video where I kind of show off this instrument in a studio setting. Essentially, how does it sound when it cuts through the mix, that sort of thing. Um, but stay tuned for that, anyways. So let's see here. In addition to the Ovation Magnum 2, there was also obviously an Ovation Magnum 1, as well as a 3 and a 4. Now the Magnum 1 was basically the same shape and model as this, however it did not have the onboard EQ and instead had a mono and stereo output jack. Now the 3 and 4, however, had a different shape. Um, they basically looked a little bit more like a Fender Precision bass. And the Magnum 3 had the stereo and mono jack that the Magnum 1 had, and the Magnum 4 had the onboard EQ, just like this one, but with a different body shape. Of all of them, I think the rarest one that I've very, very rarely seen any pictures of it is the Magnum 4. So it's like the two, but with the, with the, uh, the sliders on it. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's correct or not, but um, they made ovations, uh, or magnum bases rather, in a variety of different colors as well as different shapes using different features all throughout. Anyways, thanks for checking out the video here. I'm going to have some follow-up videos not just on this bass, but on some other uh, instruments as well too, so you might want to stick around and check those out in the future. Until then, I'll catch you on the flip side.